Welcome back to the Golden Light Worker. I am the Golden Light Worker, Castalia Theo, and in today's video we are talking about the different kinds of animal connections. I find this fitting as I am going to be doing uh, channeled sessions online and you can sign up for them on our website, which I'll put the link in the description. And because of that, there is this option, little thing, the animal healers of the Elfian realm. And there is soul kinship and animal connections written as some of the things that that domain can answer. So I want to explain what the different types of animal connections are and what a kinship animal is so you can have a better understanding when learning about how to connect to them and learning about what yours are. Now there is a fifth animal connection that is because there's four there's the four main ones and then there's a fifth one so the fifth one i have talked about and i will link that video to this one is your messenger guide your messenger guide will manifest as a messenger of the veil so a small bird a dragonfly hummingbird ladybug or butterfly it'll manifest as one of those so that is an animal connection um so for me i have an animal connection to blue jays because my messenger guide manifests as a blue jay so the other four are you have kinship, then you have totem, spirit, and power. Now, the messenger guide is always with you in every lifetime. It starts off when your soul is getting ready to incarnate in the physical form for the very first time. You will get your messenger guide. You'll meet that soul that is your messenger guide. And they will tell you how they will manifest to you when you're in the physical. They'll tell you what messenger of the veil to keep a lookout for, and you you forget when you come into the physical, but once you start to re-remember all the wisdom of your soul, you remember your messenger guide. And if you need a reminder, you can ask uh, the domain, uh, the animal healer domain for that, and they can give you that reminder. Um, kinship is also soul, and it is always with you. And actually, it is the very first animal connection that you ever develop, like before you even get messenger guides. It's a soul that you have a deep kinship with. So for me, there are, there, so there's a split in the dog group soul. There are the Novanias and then there are the regular dogs. So I have a kinship to the Novania dogs. The Novania dogs are like service dogs. They are the dogs that work to help heal people and are, that's kind of what they do. They guide, they offer service, they teach. The regular dogs are more joy bringers, uh, happy all the time, all of that. Not saying that I don't feel a connection to those ones, that's just not my kinship. And so when you're looking at the group souls of animals, they like, like split. So like with bigger birds, they split into like ostriches, flamingos, like, like you know, owls, etc. So you learn which split of that group soul and then which, you know, part you have a connection with and that's kinship. And a lot of people who existed during the time of Atlantis, their kinship might be an aquatic realm animal. Um, some people's kinship animal has to do with what group souls, um, what group soul like when the source for that group soul uh, and how close proximity is it to your star origins. That also plays a factor as well. So for example, the Novania dogs, their um, group soul star origins uh, is closer to my star, where my star origins is. So we have a shared star origins and that helps that kinship. Um, and I did do a video talking all about dogs connection to the sacral chakra but i also talk a little bit in depth about dogs in general so i'll link that video here for you to check out so you can learn a little bit more about them as they're my kinship animal and i also have a very fun backstory with the dogs in the physical form that i also talk about in that one as well so there is kinship then you have your spirit so your spirit animal is the animal that you it's always with you in every lifetime. You pick up that connection in your first lifetime in the physical form. So you don't have it until really the end of your first lifetime in the physical form. You have picked up on what animal is your spirit animal. And that is one that your soul, when it is in the physical, it feels a connection to you. There is some sort of connection there. But also that group soul, that animal reminds you of your soul's purpose and reminds you of what you're meant to do. And so for me, mine is an owl. And typically you will feel called to your spirit animal. That will be one of the first animals, like maybe... Mm, yeah, maybe in like the top five first animals that when you incarnate in the physical form in every single lifetime that you feel drawn to, that happened to me with owls. It was probably like 
it took me until I was maybe seven and then I started to feel very cold to the owls and I started wanting to be around them a lot and I didn't know why and there was no explanation for it and there really isn't an explanation for a lot of things. You can't come up with a logical reason for why. So spirit, spirit is, it's always in every lifetime, remains with you in every lifetime. Now power, a power your power animal is an animal that it kind of changes every lifetime, but it's based on what you did in the previous lifetime. So like, so what you did in the previous lifetime affects what animal you're going to have a connection with in the current lifetime for your karmic balance, like what you need to complete. What animal is basically the direct opposite energetically to what you were in the previous lifetime. So that, and these are all only positive polarity animals. So let me be very clear here. No gray area animals are going to be any of these things. Um, and no uh, negative manifestations or negative polarity animals are going to be any of these things. It's all positive polarity animals. So you are not going to have, and also I'm pretty sure insects are not involved. Let me, yeah, it's only messenger if it's a butterfly or, or a dragonfly. So any other types of insects will not be uh, on any of those because it's different. They're in the, they're in the gray area. Yes. Thank you. Animal, the animal Elphians are sitting because I'm going to do a channeling of them at the end of this video. So they're all sitting and waiting and making sure that I'm communicating correctly these animal connections. So with your power. So for me, I don't know what I, I mean, I know what I did in a past lifetime. I did a past life regression, but I'm not going to talk about it. Um, but what I did resulted in my power animal in this lifetime being a turtle. Now, typically the power animal is one that gives you ease. It is always in like, it's always opposite. And, and you'll sometimes come in the physical form like, um, very much one thing. You're still kind of repeating some old habits because the last time you were in the physical form was in the previous lifetime. So this power animal helps you reestablish your spiritual power by your connection with it and the way that it can like calm and soothe you no matter really what it is. For me, it ended up being a turtle in this lifetime, a sea turtle specifically, and they're very associated with tranquility. So it's very, um, very funny that in this lifetime it was, but I know that I got the message that in my previous lifetime my power animal was a bobcat I'm pretty sure in a previous lifetime was a bobcat or something like that um no snow leopard sorry not bobcat snow leopard <laughs> trying try to remember like my animal connections from past lifetimes like I ask because I'm curious to see like my spiritual development based on which ones are my power animal it was a snow leopard uh so it went from a snow leopard to a turtle so whatever I did in that lifetime went from a snow leopard to a turtle. So it's, it's definitely interesting. And what was funny for me is that my power animal actually soothed my anxiety. Um, like having, I had a turquoise turtle pendant bracelet. And if I just held onto the stone and it was shaped like a turtle and it had to be shaped like a turtle, like any of the other turquoise stones that I had on my bracelet didn't work. It had to be the turtle one. And I held onto it and it would instantly calm me down and I would connect, I would unknowingly connect to the turtle group soul. It's truly like fascinating. So once you know your power animal and you can just connect to their group soul so you can kind of recharge and rebalance yourself. It's very, it's very fun. And the group souls are waiting for you to connect to them in, in a deeper way than just like, oh, that animal's pretty. Like for example, there's a horse here. Horses are connected to the Earth Star Chakra, and I also have a video out about that as well. Um, so I'll link that here for you to check out uh, about the Earth Star connection to horses. Um, so horses, right? You can think, oh, they're pretty. I like them because they're pretty. Okay. If it is your power animal, which a horse is not my power animal, but it is a power animal for someone in my household. So we do have a little horse thing. Um, you connect to the horse on that level where it can bring you strength. It can help you recharge your energy. It can bring you ease and help you connect to your soul, really establish your true spiritual power by connecting to this group soul that volunteered themselves to help you in this lifetime, as opposed to just being like, this is pretty. 
it changes the type of relationship that you have with animals when you start to realize that their souls are doing a lot of work and also horses i mean they do a lot of work in general but their souls are also power animals a lot of people have a horse power animal particularly in this in this time right now and a lot of the incoming souls are going to have a horse power animal so there is a lot of that a lot a lot a lot of that now so it changes your relationship with them and the final type of animal connection that you have is your totem animal now your totem animal it also changes every lifetime but it is not based off of what you did in a past lifetime it is based on what you want to do in this lifetime so for me mine is the dolphin and it's very interesting because someone in my household, their kinship is a dolphin. So we had a lot of dolphin around us a lot and without knowing why, how we both had different types of connections to the dolphin. So dolphin for me is, okay, in this lifetime, I, you know, want to experience loyal connections. I want to experience more compassion. I, and also there, they will have some sort of relationship to your kinship animal as well. And so dolphins and dogs are related to each other. Um, and I wanted to fix my relationship with my kinship animal, which is dogs. And so totem being dolphin is very uh, interesting in that way. Um, it just reflects the things that, that you want to do. I want to be, you know, elevate myself to a higher frequency. Dolphins are in the aquatic realm. They are automatically of a higher frequency than us, their soul. And so I want that soul to help me, you know, because at a young age, I gotta like have to elevate my energy more to a higher dimension than some other people. So it has a reflection of what you want to accomplish in this lifetime. And so you, you create that kind of contract with the group soul before you enter the physical form that this is going to be my totem animal. This is what I want to be, I want to be like this in this lifetime. This is what I want to be like. This is the animal role model that I'm gonna have in my life. And you wanna take, you take that with you, like you incarnate into the physical and you take that with you. And so for me, my totem, what I want to be like, the animal that I wanna have um, some similarities to and characteristics of every day and within my work is a dolphin. And when you know that connection with your totem animal, it is a reflection of what you want to become in this lifetime and what your soul came here to do in this lifetime. So you get a better understanding of your soul by understanding what your totem animal is. Do I know what my totem animal was in a, my most recent past lifetime? Yeah. Do I remember? No, the only one I remember is that my power animal was a snow leopard, which I also forgot earlier because I said bobcat. So do I, like, if I was able to, like, go and see how my totems changed over the lifetimes to see, like, what if I actually, like, fulfilled what I wanted to do? Sure, you can use that as a way to understand your past as well. To see, like, okay, I tried to connect to this uh, animal group soul and it didn't end up working out for me so well. So let me try connecting to another one and, and try again to complete it, complete my mission, but in a different way. And so you can learn more about your soul by understanding your animal connections. And I think the biggest one is your kinship. And for me, and I've talked about this a lot in the past, I have a very rocky relationship with my kinship animal. And a lot of that has to do with just fixing that relationship with them on a soul level. And it changes my, it changed my entire perspective when I got the message that the Novanian half of the dog group soul was my kinship animal. And I understood what kinship meant, that we have a shared star origins that are of like their their sort the source of them is connected to my star origins like we have a connection not only that we have very similar purposes to accomplish and i start to see all the similarities in my soul within them and seeing that our souls have similarity we are a kinship kinship doesn't mean that you are an animal it doesn't mean that i am a dog it means that certain characteristics of the soul and what the soul is meant to do i have those so the soul for the Novanias, they're here to serve, to communicate, to um, keep away negativity while also being of service to people and helping people and guiding people and teaching people. Well, that's what I'm trying to do in this lifetime. So that is how you can see the kinship. And dolphins have a very similar effect to them, but the difference is, is that they're of a higher dimensional frequency and they don't kind of, they don't ever lose sight of their pod. They don't lose sight of the group soul. They're not taken and domesticated away and trapped. 
and that's the difference and so not only did I pick the totem in this lifetime for me because that's what I wanted to become but that's also what I wanted to help all the dogs become to not be so trapped to be out and really fulfilling their purpose and in, in the way that they're supposed to so there's all of that and it you you take on all of these different it's very symbolic but it's also your connections and so like for my power animal being turtles yeah of course i want to go and spend time with with the physical form of a group soul that helps me all the time and so you start to develop deeper connections and by doing so you automatically develop a deeper connection with the animal kingdom and also understanding the difference between what is a gray area animal and a negative polarity animal is of great benefit as well. A gray area animal, and this is in the book, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. If you want to read a little bit more about um, animals and how the elves work with the animal kingdom, you can check out the book and it'll be in the description. You can buy the ebook. Um, and if you write a review for the ebook, you get and send it to me. You can get $10 off a personal channeled session with me or uh, $10 off uh, a session with a healer of spirit, G Tina, who illustrated the book. Now, with the gray area, gray area, they are, they're not positive polarity animals. They don't have a higher purpose to accomplish on a soul level, but they're not negative polarity. They're not bad. But they're also not, they're gray, you see? Um, and so they do a lot of work. They do a lot of work for the earth. They, I mean, they do help out a lot. They just on a soul spiritual level, they don't have this higher purpose. They're not a feline. They're not a canine. They're not um, bigger birds. They're not of the aquatic realm and other um, positive polarity animals. They're not there. They're just kind of in the middle. Um, and they do a lot of work to help the earth. And when the earth is getting ready to transition to a higher dimensional frequency, when it's getting ready to raise even higher above the 5D into 60, 70, when it's raising higher to, to the new golden age, what the gray area animals do per their soul contract is they help, um, the, the higher dimensional earth separate from the lower frequency and they offer some assistance before um, we kind of never see them again, uh, which is, I mean, it's kind of sad to think of in the way so used to seeing them, um, but then they won't be a part of the new golden age future, but there are going to be so many new animals that are going to start to appear and, and take their place really, um, not in a gray area sense, but um, fill the space that they were occupying um, with like different types of higher frequency animals. So those are those in the negative polarity that there's very few true negative polarity animals the majority of the negative polarity animals are the big three negative manifestations so the manifestations of negativity and i've talked about the big three before and you can take some educations educated guesses on what the big three is now i used to refer to it as rodents but what I have learned is that there are some rodents that are called rodents um, and some of them fall in the gray area, but some of them do fall in the positive polarity and they're considered rodents and they're kind of clumped in. But in reality, they are a they've gone through a different type of evolutionary process and have come from um, some of them have come from monkey origins. It's kind of hard to, to explain it, but they've evolved into something smaller, but they're not bad. So squirrels lemurs they're connected lemurs are on the positive polarity as strange as people think that that is they are and squirrels are like connected to them on a soul level and so as we start to rise up in frequency the squirrels are going to start to evolve to i mean they already kind of look lemur like but to um appear more like their um their connected group soul so but squirrels are considered rodents um gray area chipmunks are considered rodents but they are on the gray area they're not negative manifestations but and they're not on the negative polarity but they're not on the positive polarity either they're gray they just they do work um and they're just on the gray area and then you go to um a negative manifestation um like a mouse uh, which is also considered a rodent. And then you see how the labels that we've given to animals, um, they don't apply. Like, you, you kind of put them all under a blanket, but on a soul level, they're not the same at all. Like, at all. They are three completely different things, but we clump them in the same group because, oh, they might appear a little similar. Um, so you start to realize that the physical form is not everything. Um, 
which is a very important moving forward with animal connections and understanding the relationship with animals. Now, I'm not saying that the negative manifestations are... I mean, it's not bad to... I don't know. I don't even know how to word it. I'm not even going to go there. But basically, they manifest because of negativity. And they won't come around you unless there's a lot of negativity around you. And if there is a lot of negativity around you, they will. And people don't, like, you don't know this. Like, people don't know, like, they just kind of assume. And I've, I've even seen it in the spiritual community. And I don't want to dig too deep into this right now because it's about animal connections. But I do see it in spiritual spiritual community, too, where they take these unclean animals and, and I don't know, like, normalize that they're a part of of our world when they're not they're manifestations of negativity and they kind of i don't even like to talk about it but it it's you don't want to look to them for anything and you're not going to have a connection to their souls because their souls star origins and reality is just from the negative polarity and it's just negative energy taking physical form that's what it is that's all it is and a lot of people don't want to hear that. And I don't like, I like normally don't talk about it because there is so much, um, like normalizing them so much. And also like even people hearing that some animals won't be here in the future, future, future of the earth, which I mean, that's the new golden age. We're, we're not even, we're not even fully in the 5D yet. There's a lot of time. Um, a lot of people are like, no, I don't want to hear it because it's change and they're so used to all the normalcy of things um, and trying to make everything normalized so that this is just the world that we live in and nothing's going to change. It is going to change. And you learn that a lot more when you start to connect to your animal connections. I learned that a lot more when I started to connect to my spirit animal. Your spirit animal uh, is also your spirit guide, your animal spirit guide. So... Along these animals that are on the positive polarity, you do have an animal group soul that is your spirit guide. They're one of your spirit guides um, from the animal kingdom. And that is your spirit animal is your animal spirit guide. So my spirit animal is owls. My animal spirit guide looks like a great gray owl, but it, I mean, it's an owl. So you have an animal spirit guide that is a part of the animal kingdom, a part of the positive polarity animal kingdom that guides you and teaches you and offers you assistance. You can connect to them. They will typically, they appear early on in your spiritual journey. They might appear to you uh, and offer you some guidance in the beginning. And once you start to realize that they're your spirit animal, you can just connect to them whenever. And you don't necessarily need to go into a meditation. Like if I'm feeling you know, if he has a soul, like, I'm just not having a good day. And it's just simply me focusing my intention and thinking about the owls and connecting to the group soul and just taking a minute. And I just feel refreshed. And it's that connection, understanding your relationship to to souls. Because all animals are souls. And yeah, again, not saying that the negative manifestations don't have a group soul. They do, but the group soul that they have is just the negative polarity itself. So, yeah, it's a lot and I didn't even know I was going to go down that route, but I'm glad I did. So let's tune in and see if there is any messages from the Elfian realm. Elfian animal healer, domain of the Elfian realm. Are there any Elfians who would like to communicate? Yes, the elder. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Hello, beautiful people. I would like to say something very quickly to all of you, and that is connect to your animal connections. Now, if you would like to learn more about the souls, the animal group souls that you have a connection with, all you have to do is ask. Take a deep reflective meditation and ask for your totem animal to step forward, your spirit animal to step forward, your power animal to step forward, your kinship animal to step forward, your messenger guide to step forward. Just ask them to step forward and introduce themselves to you. Get reacquainted with the souls that you have a connection with in this lifetime. And they are a part of your soul tribe. Your soul tribe is not just other humans that are a part of the same star origins as you or you chose to have a contract with in this lifetime. A good contract, a contract to do good. 
your soul tribe also includes animals. Remember that and connect to them. And that is all I have to say today. We love you all so much and can't wait to communicate more with you. Thank you, Elfian Realm, and thank you all for watching. Stay inspired, beautiful souls. I'm sending you love, light, and inspiration, and I'll talk to you in the next Spiritual Corner.